All right. Yay. We're hey, on. everyone. Uh, welcome to the Vine Live, everyone. My <laughs> name is Jim Maurer. Uh, I'm the lead pastor at Foothill Vineyard Church. And today, Debron Hazelwood, our family pastor, is with us and good friend Rick Iacobo. So uh, Rick's going to kind of keep us online in the Vine Live. We talk about life. We talk about how do we follow God together. We talk about some practical tips on Sunday. How do we put the gospel into practice in our lives? And we do a little bit of prayer at the end. So, so glad that you're with us. Uh, Rick, try to keep us online tonight. So I'm going to give it to you to, to uh, direct the conversation. You're <laughs> right. Up. I will do my best. Um, <laughs> so we've been in this uh, two weeks, two weeks, right? No, it's yep. just the third week for the second week. I think this is the third week that we were in this third week. Here. Right. Um, and we have a really good show tonight uh, for everybody. Yeah. We're going to be talking about how God um, speaks, you know, and we talked a little bit about last week and, and say we're going to talk in, in a kind of a different way that he speaks. So um, it should be a great show. Um, looking forward to saying hi to everybody. So please in the comments below, say hi. We'd love to hear from you. Um, if you have peer requests, whatever it is, uh, throw it in there. So um, without further ado, let's start off with our meme of the week. Okay. Uh, LeBron's smiling. She's got a good one this time. <laughs> They're all okay, good. Well, I think you'll like this one, Rick. And John, yeah. I don't know if you're... John, are you a Star Wars fan? Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, not? I'm not. So <laughs> this one didn't make me laugh, but it would make somebody who likes. <laughs> Once I became a parent, I finally understood the scene where Yoda gets so tired of answering Luke's questions, he just dies. <laughs> That's funny. Now, I don't know what scene they're talking about, but I can relate to wanting to just lay down and die because there's so many questions. That's <laughs> funny. That's from Return of the Jedi, right Perfect. around the one hour mark, if anyone's wondering. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. I love it. That Rick knows exactly where it is. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere around there. <laughs> no, I identify with that picture too. Like, especially, okay, so my daughter, that her name's Remedy. She's seven years old and she is a question machine. Like yep. constant, like, like it's 20 questions a minute, you know, like, but I love it because like that's the age where they're just trying to figure everything out and figure out life and figure out time and figure out days and figure out like, how do things just, how do things work? Like, how does a remote control work? Like she just asked me that the other day and it's just so fun, right? And the problem is I don't know half the answers but it's just fun having that conversation, you know? You know what is so great in our era of parenting is when I don't know the answers which is like 95% of the time, I'm like, I don't know, let's ask Alexa. <laughs> Alexa <laughs> has the answers, so it's great. <laughs> I That's love funny. that. DeBron is like Google, like even in staff meetings, if something comes up and we're like, hey, what about this? She's literally on her phone, just like figuring it out. She has <laughs> an answer before anybody else can. So I do, I do appreciate that. She's like, like the answers. <laughs> search for knowledge and trying to fight, figure it out. So <laughs> yeah, what did awesome. you ever do when you were dunk, younger, DeBron? Like, okay, so do? my dad actually did have the Encyclopedia Britannica set, like that. Oh, wow three shelves on our you know bookshelf in the living room and I actually loved them they were these big giant brown books that weighed you know as much as I did and I'd pull them out and I loved being able to like look and find information about you know what I was wondering and my dad was really good about answering questions so he always tells these stories about how I would ask about how does the oil you know drilling thing work and like going to Palm Springs you know you can see some of those drilling things and how do those windmills work and how does this work and he'd always tell me like a full explanation so it's his fault this whole thing is all his fault <laughs> yeah i love it <laughs> that's funny so good yeah so speaking of uh encyclopedias <laughs> <laughs> true rick's trying to find a good segue uh, for that one uh what's our uh, our story of the week uh, it has nothing to do with encyclopedias. But, That's going to become you know. like a new uh, a new thing on Vine Live that we wait for to see like Rick's, you know. Yeah. Rick's great segue to the next segment yeah. if he can. 
<laughs> I love it, Rick. <laughs> okay, so our story this week um, is, I'm going to share a picture, about a border collie named Tilly. And so this dog, this sweet little dog, was she's two years old, and she was in a car accident with her family in Idaho. Um, and she actually was lost. She was ejected from the car, and she was lost for a while. And so the family couldn't find her. They were all okay, but they couldn't find her. Emergency workers couldn't find her. And so they ended up putting out like, you know, papers all around looking for the dog and they put an ad out on Facebook. Well, meanwhile, a farmer a couple miles away had seen this dog show up at their, at their farm and was like herding the animals on the farm. And his, one of his family members in Southern California told him about this missing dog just by chance saw the ad on Facebook or the post on Facebook and told him yeah. about the missing dog. And then they put the pieces together and realized it was Tilly and they were able to reunite her with her family. But how fun that's, is that? That's awesome. I love that story because Tilly just like, I don't know what else to do. I'll just hurt some animals and help out on the yeah. farm. You know, like <laughs> this is what I was created to do. So let me do my job, you know, like just yeah, living doing her life. thing. <laughs> yeah love it that's yeah. awesome all right so this week we're talking about how god maybe speaks to others through us and yeah. uh you know what is that what is that what's the definition of that look like john you had a couple definitions on sunday but yeah so we just talked about this idea that the god who speaks which we talked about that the week before um sometimes wants to speak to us to encourage others and so we just looked at this idea of um like what could that look like what does it mean um i right now i feel like the world is in desperate need of real encouragement and and sometimes god will give me a picture a word a scripture and then the question is is that for myself is that for the church or is that for maybe a friend of mine or somebody that i see or or maybe DeBron or maybe Rick, you know, so, so um, I, I, I do feel like God wants to use us in each other's lives in that way to strengthen, encourage and comfort one another. And obviously, that's, um, I'm looking at the text of First Corinthians 14, one through three there. Um, and so Paul talks about like, these encouraging words for other people where we're hearing God's voice for somebody else, they're for strengthening, encouraging and comforting each other. And so we just discussed that and it was a really uh, fun and I shared some stories about how um, God used that type of um, word in my life, but also how God used it for me, for other people. And it was just really a, a fun way to say, oh my gosh, God actually wants to use the whole church. And as we're following his spirit, like, and we're walking around town, we're doing our things that we do what if God really wanted to use us in all these little ways to encourage people around us? Um, and so we just looked at that and I think it's a, a fascinating idea and concept that God would choose to use me to encourage somebody else like that. And, and it's not just like, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's more than just, um, like, encouragement but it's like encouragement that actually means something and it's a profound moment in somebody else's life too so it's not just like encouragement it's encouragement that's like has revelation behind it and god's trying to say something to that other person and so that's what we talked about it was really really kind of fun oh. yeah now do you have to be you have to have certain qualifications for this john like do you have to be a pastor before you say something to someone like that or <laughs> Rick, I love how priest. you're uh, trying to set me up on this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, possibly no, a loaded like, question. Okay, so actually this is really good because some people are like, well, this is for just kind of special people that like, you know, like they study the Bible for their career and, and then they might hear something from God for somebody else. No, I'm, I'm actually convinced that every single Christian um, can, can do this in their life. Um, and some are going to have more of a spiritual gift and they're going to use this on a regular basis. But since every single person that's given their life over to the Lordship of Jesus, we are indwelled by the spirit of God. And so with that, 
at any point anyone because within the whole if we've given our life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit indwells us. And within the Holy Spirit are all the gifts of the Spirit. And so at any moment, we could be, encourage somebody else just because um, it's what I call a situational gift. Um, and the Vineyard Movement as a whole, we kind of use that terminology. because So God could use anybody at any time for anything. And mm-hmm. sometimes we just have to be open to that. And I, I love that concept because God, we can't just box God in it's like God at any moment um can speak to our hearts and and it's up to us whether we open up our mouths maybe and encourage somebody and I kind of share this at the end a little bit like sometimes I'll be in a in a coffee shop or I'll be at a thrift store or at the mall or whatever else a grocery store and and if I'm paying attention I'll just have like Oh, I, I, sometimes I can sense people's sadness or I can sense, um, like sometimes I'll get like a picture for somebody in my mind's eye and it's up to me whether I share that with them or not. So Starbucks is the easiest or coffee shop. Cause you're kind of sitting next to somebody and they're doing their thing and you're doing your thing. And, um, and sometimes I'll just bring it up and before you know it, just out in public I'm praying for them and they're like wow that was so amazing like they're all they're just open to what God's saying and I'm talking about even like non-Christians or people that maybe used to be in church that are no longer in church like like God shows up out there out in the streets um in really cool ways as we're willing to kind of follow the nudges of the spirit for other people so to answer that question Rick it's God wants to use everyone if we just maybe be open, right? Right. I have a question. Right. Okay. All right. How, what if you can't tell if the thought or the picture or the word is God or you? Okay. That's a great question. A and I question. think that's the number one. And I think that's why we're like, ooh, what if, what if we say something and it makes us look foolish? Um, so first of all, um, most of the time we're pretty doggone selfish people, right? So normally I don't sit there and think I'm at Starbucks and I'm in my own little world. Uh, I'm on my computer going through a sermon for the next Sunday, uh, editing something, whatever, okay? And if I have an impression that that person next to me, there's something going on there, normally I would say that that's God. But now I, I want you to know I kind of pra- I've tried to practice this over time. I'm not perfect because sometimes I don't follow that little nudge of the spirit. But sometimes I think we just have to be willing to step out and take a risk, right? So John Wimberg said, faith is spelled R-I-S-K and step out and try it. And as we try this more often, we'll get more used to identifying when is it God and when is it ourselves? But I think a lot of people think, oh, that's just myself, let it go, let it go. But then they never get to the point where they're actually stepping out in faith and testing it. And just maybe, and you could do this in super, just real authentic ways where it comes across just normal. Like, Hey, I was just over there and I would just, I just saw you. And I, are you wrestling with uh, hurt from the past or something like that? And people in those moments, people are like, Oh yeah. Like they actually want to dialogue with you, especially if it's even close. And if they say, Mm -hmm. Nope, then you just kind of let it go, you know? So, yeah. Um, okay. So What's anyway, the worst I, that can happen? Yeah. I just want to encourage people to kind of like, <laughs> when you sense something, I encourage people to like, te- to like try it, test it. Um, because that's how you get, become more familiar with God's spirit, trying to speak to you for, about other people. And, um, but it's always going to look like um, what Paul talks about in first Corinthians 14, three, uh, for strengthening, encouraging, and comfort, you know, that's going to be, um, that's, that's kind of Paul's reframing of um, what, what that type of stuff looks like in a Christian's life. Perfect. Okay. What do you think, Rick? So, um, so for me, generally, it's not um, like what you have, like, if you see someone and you just think about something, for me, it's when I'm teaching. Um or doing a Vine Live or something like that, normally I'll be down the path of, of you know, what I want to say. And the thought will pop in my head, talk about this, tell this story, 
and it could, it might not be linked to what I'm talking about, but every time I've kind of gone through and just said that story instead, and kind of took that little tangent, um, every single time someone's come up and just been like, I can't believe, you know, like that, you know, that was amazing because it, it spoke right to my heart. So like last night, um, when we were at that, uh, what is it? Uh, Our Life Together Dinners. Life Together Dinner. Yeah. Um, We were talking about uh, God and how he could be before time and space. And and the one guy who's also named John, there's three Johns sitting at this table. So if you (laughs) yelled John out, like three people would look at you, you know? It was a little weird. Awesome. But John number three, because this is John number one here. There's John number three. Thank you. Because there was one, two, three for me, you know, and uh, had asked about, like, he was actually struggling with, like, how could have God, how could God be before everything? You know, what was before everything, you know? And, um, and I'd said, I just kind of spouted out, like, you know, we're, we're finite beings trying to understand an infinite being, you know? And then someone asked me, his son asked me, like, 20 seconds later, he's like, can you repeat that? And I'm like, what did I say, you know? And so I had to go back and like, literally think about it, but I didn't think about when I said it, it was just like, John was, this John number one was talking to John number three and telling him a story and it just popped into my head, you know, and I did have said it. Um, And so it was like, a lot of times when I kind of jumped down that route of speaking that out, like, like I'll feel like a little kind of hitch in my chest, like God's doing something, you know? And just go with it and, and, you know, see where we end up. And, and every time it's been um, to edify people or encourage them or comfort them, uh, you know, from whatever it is. And it could just be some random story in, from my life. And, you know, that's mildly amusing, which most of them are. And uh, that's it. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Yeah. And I, I think, I think as, as we follow that little rabbit trail that, that the Holy Spirit has us on, I think there's great reward for us as God's people. Like, cause in the end, Rick, like you even feel encouraged, right? Like there's mm-hmm. something about that conversation that afterwards you're like, Oh, that was like, like God, God was using a couple of my words, but it was like God's spirit kind of moving through you to do that. And it, it's super encouraging, right? It's just super right. fun to, to kind of yeah. follow that that trail that the spirit leads us on, you know, that journey. How about you, Debron? Anything that comes to your mind? I've been on the receiving end of this a lot and only on like the giving side a couple of times. Um, and I think it is a lot of like my question, like so often it's like, ah, oh, like I feel afraid. And actually I did ask somebody that once, or I was talking about this and they were like, but just like what you said, just just do it like, and trust that God's going to use what he wants to use, you know? And if he's not going to use what you say, then that's okay. You know? And I was like, Oh, okay. But, um, one time I like kind of made a, like I was at us in a church service actually. And there was a woman sitting a couple rows ahead of me. And I just kind of like kept like seeing her, you know what I mean? Like just my attention kept shifting towards her and yep. I'm like thinking, okay, like, that's silly. Like I should be focusing on this worship song right now, you know? And, and then I just had this like little phrase that just kept kind of playing over and over in my mind. And I'm like, uh, I think I'm supposed to tell her that, but I don't want to like, and so I made this little bargain. I was like, okay, God, like if I can tell that she's like, you know, struggling with something or kind of feeling sad or, or whatever, like, then I will go tell her whatever you're saying. And literally the very next minute, she like reaches into her purse and pulls out a tissue and she's like wiping her eyes and crying. I'm like, what? Dang it. Like, okay. <laughs> so I did go tell her what I thought God was saying. That's I, was funny. Like, I might be so crazy right now. So here's there, there's that, you know, but I told her and, and I don't know what her story was, but she seemed very encouraged and thankful and it seemed appropriate. So I was like, okay, God, yay. <laughs> but on the, rec- I, I love that. And I think on the receiving end, I mean, it's just, it feels like just being heard and seen, seen. It feels like being seen, you know, whether it's by God or by the person that's, that's reaching yeah. out to you or whatever. It's just this overwhelming, like, what? Like, 
I'm seen, you know, I'm not just kind of floating around by myself. So, yeah. One of the things I think is really important about what you just said, Debron, is that there's a level of humility that we bring to the table in dealing with these things. So, so we never say like, thus saith the Lord or do this or do that. It's more like, I sense God saying this, what do you think? And we're letting them test it. We're letting, we're giving them space to have a dialogue with it. Um, and we're, we're just kind of throwing it out and seeing if, if it sticks or not, if it doesn't, so be it, you know, like, that's okay. Yeah. Um, just a, like, I think it was about two weeks ago, I was praying for somebody um, with my wife, Kate. And as we prayed for them, um, in my mind's eye, I saw this person like behind, like at a sailboat, like steering a sailboat, but like totally enjoying the wind and, and like, and then Kate, my wife, right. I was going to say this. I'm like, I sense I have a picture for you. Kate literally said almost the identical thing. Like I see this sailboat in your ship. Like, and it was about leadership and their leadership capacity and leading a team. And she said the, almost the exact same thing. And I'm like, oh, the, me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and sometimes I think those are the moments where we're like, oh, the Holy Spirit is trying to encourage us that we're, we are following the right, like we're, we're moving in the right direction. And this person that we share that with, we get a chance to pray over them. And they were really encouraged and they were really touched by that. And I, it was like the spirit of God was kind of encouraged them in, in their leadership capacity and what's next. So yeah, it's, yeah, we just sometimes have to take a risk and step out, you know? Love that. Yeah. So, so I think that's the third practical tip <laughs> is the risk part. And yeah. you might've hit part of number one, maybe one of the points in number one, maybe we should go through those real quick. Yeah, yeah, let's go through. Good segue, them. Rick. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Speaking <laughs> of practical tips. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, the practical tip that we're going to go over um, today, today is it's four steps to modeling, like how to do this, how to effectively share encouraging words with people. Um, step one is to be attentive to the spirit, quiet your heart, be attentive to any words or phrases, pictures, uh, Bible verses, any sensations that come to mind. And if it gains traction, pay attention to it. What do you mean if it gains traction? So, so some things, um, like when I was praying for that guy two weeks ago with, with my wife, like I, it was like the picture of the sailboat was in my mind, right? But then I'm like trying to incur, like somebody else is praying for this person. And then, but it kept, it kept, it, it was there. And yeah. it, it's almost like it wouldn't go away for a minute. Yeah. Now I could have just like, for, I could have let it completely go, but I just said, okay, it's, it's there. And it, the picture's not like, it's persistent leading it. Like, it's like, it yeah. sticks there for a little bit. And yeah. so then the, I feel like that's something that the spirit was doing. So yeah. sometimes if it gets some traction in your own mind, your own heart, it's the spirits trying to like reinforce you, encourage you to, to go for it. Okay. Step two is to tell the person what you're hearing, seeing, or sensing. Step three, if you sense the meaning of what you're hearing, tell them that as well. And then step four is to pray into what you've seen or heard. The prayer piece is important. We're not just interested in giving them information. We want God to move in the person's life. Yeah. So giving that last example of the two sailboats and like the same picture that Kate and I had for this one person, um, in the end, we were able to actually like, can we pray for you? And in the end, the end result was, I think the Holy Spirit was like, encouraging this person to believe that the things that they're doing in their leadership capacity is that they have enough to like really lead and lead well. And so it was literally that simple. Um, and then we prayed that over them, over this person. And he was super encouraged. And like, hmm. it was just something that, that he needed in that moment. And the spirit kind of met him there. So always pray for him. Always. And I've done that at, like at coffee shops. I'm like, can I just pray for you? And they're like, absolutely. Like, it's really funny when something that you say, it's almost like, they're just open because the spirit opens that door 
and they they want what God has for them in that moment. It's really fun. I, I like those moments. That's great. Yeah. Love it. All right. And speaking about stepping out in faith at coffee shops, what was point number three? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> point was um, just to uh, take that step of faith and speak out what is in your heart. You might find God highlighting things to you in your family, with your friends, during church, even walking through the store. You never know where God might want to use you to advance his kingdom. Be open to his voice and don't let fear hold you back. That's right. Amen. Great. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right, so we got a few minutes left. Um, what do we have for movies, books, and stuff this week? Well, I have a book for you. Oh, um, okay, good. So this is Ben Witherington the Third, and he wrote Jesus the Seer, uh, the Progress of Prophecy. And um, in this book, he really lays out the history of like hearing God for for somebody else um, during the time of Jesus. And so, and then he, he just dives into um, the different times where Jesus, Jesus did this. And, and it, so it's a great read. It's kind of, it's a little more on the scholarly side, but it's a great read for you. So it's like 350 pages plus. So Jesus, the seer, Ben Witherington, the third. Hmm. Perfect. Cool. Okay. I have you a book. Wrong? It's only, um, I only have it on Kindle, so I don't have the actual book, but it's called Parenting with Love and Logic. And I decided to share this because I've had like four conversations in the last week about these books. So I was like, you know what? That's what I'm going to share. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it's a parenting book and I love it or loved it. I'm not currently reading it, but I've read it several times and it's a series. So they have like Parenting with Love and Logic for younger kids and then you know, school-age children and teens and all that. But the premise of the concept is it's all about like giving your kids as much freedom as you can within the boundaries that you set so that they learn through their mistakes and like natural consequences in a safe way before the consequences are really big, you know? Yeah. And so it's all about like giving them the power basically and teaching them how to make decisions and then learn from the consequences and think critically and all that stuff. So anyway, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. I even did a class once several years ago on it. I'm a big fan. So there you go. Oh, what's the name of it again? Parenting with Love and Logic. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sweet. Like yes. it. We'll put the description down below. A link down below. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we have a couple things coming up. At least one that I know of, right? Uh, with the church, we have the progressive dinner. Maybe we should talk about yep. that for a second. Yeah. And the remaining well, the date minute and 30 seconds. Okay. The date is July 30th and it starts at 6 p.m. John, you can share more deets. Go for okay. it. Okay. A progressive dinner. <laughs> so fun. If you haven't gone to one, we actually progress from house to house to house to house. And so the first house will have a little appetizer, second house will have a salad, third house will be the main dish, and then the fourth house will be dessert. And then the last house will be at Mary Egan's house. And so they have a pool and we'll just hang out together outside. Um, so that's coming up at the end of this month and it'll be really fun. So um, it's Friday night, the 30th, is that right? Yeah, July 30th at 6. July 30th. Yep. So I would love for you to join us. It's gonna be really fun. Yeah. And it's awesome. Just, yeah, you just kind of house hop, super fun. And eat, it's always yeah, good. Eat. You always can eat a lot of food, so. You're always yeah. tempted to eat more salad at the salad house. Kids are like, oh no, like, but then you, you actually, and just so you know, it only takes, you're only at each house for like 15, 20 minutes, you know, and the, except the last house and then we stay there a little bit longer. So yeah, yeah, super fun. Yeah. If you guys That's are great. interested, comment and then we can get you the information. Yep. Great. Okay. Um, do we have anything else we wanted to bring up uh, coming up? When's Bunko going to be again? Do we have an oh, idea of that? We haven't set a date we yet. We actually just talked about that. So, yeah. yeah. Oh. We'll let people know next week. Yeah. Okay. Bunko's coming. We're not sure when, but it's going to happen again <laughs> sometime in the next decade. We're sure yeah. of it. Month. <laughs> Bring down a little bit more. Decade. Next 30 days ish. Okay. <laughs> Great. 
All right. Uh, let's pray and we can get out of here for the day or night or whatever it is, depending <laughs> on when you see this. I think. Uh, maybe I'll pray today. That'd be great. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. John's talked a whole lot. So I know. Maybe, Wait, sometimes you, know. you have to. Rick, you're you're in charge. You have to be like, John, let me let the talk. I know. It's, you know, that's why I'm like, maybe I'll pray because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Lord, just thank you for uh, this time tonight, uh, just getting to talk about uh, how you move in our lives. And we just thank you for the opportunities and experiences that that brings. Um, we thank you for using us in that capacity, uh, because not only does it bring um, healing and comfort and encouragement to the person that we're telling it uh, to, it also brings it to us. And you just know our hearts so well um, to do these things. And we just love you even more for it. So we just thank you for this week, the opportunity to pray for others um, and just to speak your words over them, uh, that they, they come from near and far and that we can just step out and have the uh, boldness to do so. We just thank you for all these things. Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Love you guys. Peace in the Middle East. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Bye.